see this unattractive firm? I'm gonna be honest with you. During my career, I have made firms that look like this, or even worse. But after learning a few basic design tricks, I managed to turn my forms from looking like they have made 30 years ago to looking like this. And these design tricks are not difficult to learn, even if you have no previous design experience. So follow me as you will learn to never make a bad looking form ever again. Clone the repository in the pinned comment if you wanna code along with me. After you've done it, please install the packages and start the development server. Here you can see our final result, but we're gonna start working on the inputs base.html. Open it in your favorite IDE. I'm using VS Code. To get started, uncomment this line to add Tailwind to your project. The first obvious difference to me is that our form takes a lot less space than the finished result. When I start working on new design like this, I wanna think where I want the form to sit on the page. It feels really awkward to have the form in the upper left corner, so instead let's center it. I begin by adding a little bit of padding to the sides and a lot more marching to the top and bottom. This gives the form a lot more room to breathe. Add a reasonable max width for the form and set the margin on the x-axis to auto, which will center the form on the page. All of the text in the form is very cramped up together, which makes it very difficult to read. Let's add some space between the elements. All of the input boxes are almost invisible. This is because their background color is the same as the bodies. Adding a very light gray background for the body helps them pop out more. At least we can see our input boxes now, but they look very underwhelming. This is where we can make the biggest difference in our design. Start by adding a border and changing the color to a medium gray. To change the position of the inputs to be below the label, let's change their display to block. The inputs are currently a lot smaller than I would like to, so let's fix it by adding padding on the Y and X axis. Make the inputs full width to give the user more room to type and change the borders to rounded to make them look more clickable. They are starting to look a lot better, but now we need to fix the black outline when the input is focused. With the outline removed, it's very difficult to tell which input is currently focused. To fix this, let's instead change the color of the border. Let's give them a nice medium teal color. You don't have to use teal as the color. In fact, you can use any color you want. I would encourage you to use your brand colors. For example, Discord uses their purple in their login form. Now that the inputs are looking good, let's focus on the text. All the text elements in this form look the exact same. There's no hierarchy and they're competing for attention. There's three ways you can emphasize text. Size, weight and color. We want the heading to be the most important element, so let's increase its size and make it semi-bold. For this help text right here, we can make it a little bit smaller so it doesn't compete with the label. Let's talk about color for a second. The subtitle and the help text are the same color as the other text elements. To de-emphasize them, let's give them a little bit lighter gray color.
Now there is this awkward gap between the heading and the subtitle. To fix this, let's wrap them inside a div. Now we have all of the elements correctly grouped together. The heading and the subtitle, label and input, label, input and help text. All of the input boxes are the same width, which is a little bit deceiving. For example, no one is going to write a very large number in the budget. To fix this, let's change the width of each of the inputs to match the expected text that the user is going to write. For the budget, we can set the width to a quarter of its current width. For the first and last name, we can set the width to half of its current width. The current address can stay as the full width as addresses are usually very long. Now that the first and last name are half width, we can actually set them right next to each other instead of being on top of each other. To do this, we can wrap them inside a flexbox. And let's add a little bit of space between them so they are not right next to each other. The added benefit of having the first and last name right next to each other is that it's helpful to have similar elements grouped together. When increasing the budget, we can see that it's in increments of $0.01. To let users know this, we can add a placeholder text. And while we are at it, let's change the placeholder text to be a lighter gray. But this begs the question, in which currency is the budget in? The naive way to show this to the user would be to add a help text under the input or next to the label. But we can do something better. We can add the currency inside the input. Let's add a div and set the currency to USD. Currently, the currency is on top of the input, but to give the illusion that it's inside it, we need to do some more designing. Let's start by wrapping them inside a flexbox. For the currency, I'm gonna change the display to flex and center the items and add a little bit of padding to the sides. This design is a little bit small, so let's zoom in a little bit so we can get a better view. To make the currency look like it's part of the input, I'm going to set its background color to be the same color as the input's border. I'm gonna set the text color to white and I wanna round the corners only on the left side. For the input, it's still rounded on all sides. To make it look like it's part of the currency, I'm gonna make it rounded only on the right side. Now the input and the currency look like they're the same element. But we can do better than just showing text. We can use an icon instead. For icons, I like to use Font Awesome. So go to the repository and select SVG, Solid, and then search for Dollar. Select the dollar sign SVG and switch to the source and just copy it. Then paste it over the USD text. Unfortunately, we don't see anything. This is because it has no size yet. So let's try different sizes and see what works the best. Six is a lot bigger than I would want to. 4 is still a bit better, so let's go down to 3. Let's fill it with the current text color. The form looks amazing so far, 
but we can work on the text a little bit more. Currently, it's using the system default fonts, which in my case is Ubuntu, but this changes depending on what operating system and browser you use. My preferred way to add custom fonts to a site is by using Google Fonts. And I'm going to show you one of my all-time favorite fonts. It's called Inter. It looks amazing on all screen sizes, and it really has this kind of look that fits into modern dashboard type sites. So let's choose the two styles we're gonna use, regular and semi-bold. Copy the link and paste it into the head of your HTML. Nothing changes because we still need to extend our Tailwind config to add this new font. Go to Tailwind config and uncomment these lines. This is gonna extend the sans serif font family with the font we just added. Let's refresh the page and see how much better it looks like. To add final touches, let's make the text anti-aliased and the color very dark gray instead of black. These changes are very subtle. In this video, I only covered input boxes, but there's so much more to good forms. In the following videos, I'm gonna cover buttons, drop downs, check boxes, and so much more. So please consider subscribing so you stay notified when I upload more videos. Thank you.